I did something the other day that I'm constantly reminding my clients not to do. I broke two of my own rules. I was working and jumping from task to task. I had a bunch of windows open on my computer. At one point, I even said to myself, I don't know what to do next. Sound familiar? Hey, look, I'm a coach. I, I make mistakes. The mistake isn't something that you need to beat yourself up over. I'm going to walk you exactly through what I did, how I got there, and how I handled it so that you can avoid some of these potential pitfalls in your own journey so that you can stay on track with your business goals. All right. So before I tell you exactly what happened and, and, and what I did, I want to first preface that before I became a business owner, before I, I started my real estate business, before I started my coaching business, I was in a nine to five job for, for 25 years. I worked in corporate and I, for the most part, I lived in reactive mode. I lived by what my employers were telling me to do. I had very little control over my calendar in terms of work. Right. And I just didn't know any better. Like, that's just what I thought I was supposed to do. Like, they're telling me what to do. I'm just going to go do it. I continued to do that for my entire career. And I continued to make more money and more money and more money and get better at my job. And I just said, okay, I just got to keep doing what I'm doing. Well, eventually, if you don't start taking control over your situation, over your calendar, being more intentional about with your time, which I was not, you're going to cap out on, on your income. At least that's what happened to me. And I capped out at about $200,000 a year. This is towards the end of my career, right? And I just was kind of like, that's why I started looking at all these side hustles. And I got like, I got to make more money, right? Because I wanted more. I wanted a better, I wanted a better lifestyle. I wanted more, I wanted more money. And I just didn't realize that it wasn't necessarily the side hustle. You know, it wasn't the side hustle because I, I picked a bunch and I, it didn't work. And I'm like, well, I got to pick the right side hustle. That wasn't it. It was, it was because I, I just wasn't intentional with my time. I didn't know. I didn't know any better. You don't know what you don't know. You hear that all the time. So I thought that I was doing the right stuff, but I just, I wasn't doing the right stuff. I got that figured out. So fast forward to Monday and I'm very intentional with my calendar. Like if you look at my calendar, you'll see blocks of time to do health and wellness stuff, to do work, family time, all the areas of my life. And I'm pretty diligent about it, but I also am a human being, even though I'm a coach and I coach this stuff and I know better and I do know better, I still make mistakes. So I was doing something in my calendar that I really didn't want to do. And I'd never want to do it. And I, I'm creating a course, the W2 Prison Break Roadmap. I'm doing a 2.0 version. And one of the things I have to do is create the slides. Like I've got all the content laid out. I've got to create the keynote slides for the presentation that I do. Well, I don't like doing it. I don't want to do it. And this particular day, Monday, I just didn't feel like doing it. It's on my calendar. I'm looking at it. I kind of opened it up and I started doing it while I immediately went into like this avoidance mode. And it took me a while to realize that I had, that I was intentionally doing it, but I was opening up various windows and that led to, okay, I'm opening up this window. And now I go down this rabbit hole, then this rabbit hole, all of a sudden one or two windows being open turns into 15, which is how a lot of us just live. We open up our computer and we open up 15, 20, 30 windows. I mean, I've seen some people's windows, computers on Zoom calls where it's like, you can't even see the windows because it's so small. There's so many of them. I'm like, you got, you got to close those windows out. And they admit it's like, yeah, I know you don't even know how bad it is. I'm like, that's pretty bad. You're telling me it's worse than that. Well, at the end of the day, it's the same thing. You have that many windows open. Like you didn't get anything done versus if you just have one window open, you actually have an opportunity to complete that thing. So my one window is the keynote, is the slide. And that one turned into 15 and it happened very, very quickly. And then I started doing personal shit, right? Like, which is reserved for a time block that I have on Fridays in my calendar. And this thing that I was doing, this personal thing that I was trying to solve wasn't really that important. It would have gotten done. It didn't need to get done that day. I was simply just avoiding the thing. Here's the consequence of avoiding stuff that you put on your calendar. Because I took the time on Sunday to put that in my calendar and say, this is important. 
this needs to get done. And I wrote it down as my needle mover for the day. I wrote it down. I said, okay, what's my one, what's my third needle mover? My first two are related to health and wellness. And then I write my third one down for business. And I said, get the keynote slide done. And I'm looking at it. So I took that time. And then when I go to do it, I'm, I'm, I'm intentionally avoiding it. And if I don't do the slide, then I can't complete that particular week of the course. If I don't complete that particular week of the course, I can't complete the course. If I don't complete the course, I can't upload it to my community, W2 Prison Break Nation. If I don't do that, then I can't promote the course and my community. And if I don't do that, then I can't make a money. And if I don't do that, then, you know, I can't pay the bills. My family doesn't get to eat. I don't get to pay the mortgage. Like if you would just simply look at what the cost is to you and your family of you avoiding stuff that you intentionally put in your calendar and you write down, it's like, Hey, this is important. It needs to get done. You would probably have a much better opportunity to complete the thing. But even knowing all that, even knowing all that, I still chose to do this personal shit and then went down a rabbit hole of opening up 15 windows and I got sucked into social media. I was using social media as a distraction and I wasn't using the way that I normally use it, which is to participate in social media, to do research, to find out what my potential clients, my target audience needs, to look at strategies for new content. I was consuming it. I had just gone back to the old version of me, you know, the, the 35 to 40 year old version of Brian, who was just constantly living in distraction mode and consuming information and not doing anything. The difference between then and now and that particular day is I recognized it much faster. Now, this went on for a little bit. I'd say it probably went on for a couple of hours and it wasn't a, it wasn't a good situation, especially when I said to myself, I don't know what to do next. And I was like, oh, man, that's not a good feeling. Like I literally felt helpless. So here's what happened after that. After I made that comment, I realized exactly what was going on. It's like, OK, I'm avoiding this keynote. I'm avoiding this thing because I don't want to do it. And rather than continue to stay in that, that mode, like I got up, I got out of my office and I walked it off and I just kind of like changed my, I changed my environment. I just left the, the room. It's like, this is a bad place to be right now. And I can't stay in here. So I changed my environment. That is the immediate remedy for whenever you feel that way, whenever you notice that you're avoiding something and that you're just getting caught up in all of the distractions and doing personal stuff and having all the windows open and jumping from task to task, because that is, that's kind of like a drug, you know, that's addictive. And you think you're being productive. You think that you're actually getting shit done when in the reality is you're contributing to the, I don't get to pay my mortgage. I don't get to feed my family because I'm doing this shit that doesn't matter that I can wait to do until my time block on Friday. And, and guys, I lived for years like that. Okay. Now, sure. I had a, a nine to five job and I was paid quite, quite well doing my nine to five job, but you get what I'm saying here. It's like, if I didn't make a change, eventually I could have been like the casualty of you know, age or whatever, whatever it was, because I was relying on somebody else to, 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 to pay me, which is one of the reasons I got out of, out of my nine to five, but I didn't know any better then. now I know better. And I still made the error. And I share this with you too, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I, I, I want you to understand that a lot of you don't even realize that you're living this way. So it's good to maybe hear it from somebody who lived that way for a long time and doesn't anymore, but still falls back like old habits die hard. Right. I haven't been out of my job for, you know, it's been a little over four years. So, you know, you don't completely kill these habits, right? Which is living in reactive mode, which is, you know, getting distracted. Like we're constantly looking for distractions. Like our brains are built that way. So I was able to course correct. I was able to do it much faster, but I was also able to handle it in a way where it was like, okay, Brian, you made this mistake. You got to shake it off, you know, give yourself a little bit of grace. We'll go, we'll go, we'll go back at it tomorrow. I actually knocked off a little bit early because I didn't want to just be in that environment that I had created. Like I created the whole thing, right? It wasn't because 
stuff was happening. It was like, I chose to click all the windows open and go down this rabbit hole and go down that rabbit hole and not do what I was supposed to be doing, what I had committed to do, what I had said I was going to do, what I had, I didn't keep the promise to myself. I wasn't being an accountable person. And the next day I did the slides because I was able to use the strategy of recognizing it. So awareness, say like, Hey, you're not, you're not living your best life right now using a strategy to course correct. I just left the, I left, right? Like sometimes that's the move. Like you hear folding is the move. That was the move for me. I was just like, Hey, I'm just going to, I'm just going to call it right now. Right. I need, I need, I need to, I need a mental break. Clearly I need to reevaluate this and think about this because sometimes it's hard to think. And that's what I was thinking about was like, Hey, if I don't do this, then these seven or eight, nine things are going to happen. And I, that, I'm not okay with that. Like, I got to get this done. Like, right. I've committed to do it. I've made the promise to do it. And then the social media, correct. It's like, Hey, you know, better dude. Right. But we still make errors and that's totally fine. Like I'm still moving forward towards my goal. Now, if I did the same thing the next day and the day after that, that's a problem. Then I'm not living with integrity. I'm not doing what I said I was going to do. I'm not behaving like an accountable person. So I want you to number one, recognize that maybe perhaps you're living in this situation where you were like me in my mid thirties to early forties where you thought you were doing all the right, you think you're doing all the right things, but you're not really getting anywhere. And you're living in this reactive state and you're doing a bunch of busy work and not really identifying, Hey, what are the things that I should be doing that are going to get me to where I want to go? And if you have not defined that yet, then you have to define that to some extent. It doesn't have to be perfectly written out clear as day, but you have to start defining like, Hey, what, you know, what do I want to do? Like, what do I want my life to look like? If you can get on that path and then continue to get better and better and better and give yourself time. And it does take time. Like it, this took a long time for me to get to this point where I actually felt like, Hey, I have pretty good control over my, my day and my calendar and my time. It doesn't happen overnight. It's ongoing. And even though I feel this way, I still have these moments where it's like, Hey, I don't know what to do next. Like I said that. And I think it's important for you, for you to hear that. For those of you who are maybe thinking that you are looking at people who have had some success that you look up to, that you follow, I'm not just talking about just me where they never make any errors, right? Or they don't do stuff like this. And I can tell you that nothing's further from the truth. There are very few people that I, that I know that don't have similar, that, that wouldn't say, oh yeah, me too. Like I coach my students how to do this and I make the same errors. You know, because that would be hypocritical because we are all human beings. We are all fallible. And, I, you know, I'm going through this, this redo of my, I keep saying redo and it's not really a redo. It's a revamp. It's like the, 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 the first version on steroids, right? Like the W2 Prison Break Roadmap course was a five day podcast series that I did. I turned it into a video course. This is a six week course roadmap 2.0. So it's got a lot of stuff in it and it's going to, it takes a lot of time to put this together and I got to knock these slides out, right? Like I have a process, you know, like I got to put up, build out all the bullet points. Like these are the con, this is the content. This is the format. Then I build the slides out for the one week. Then I record it. Then I, then it gets edited. Then I post it, wash, rinse, repeat until it's done. Like, and that's been working well for me. For this particular day, I chose to derail myself. And there could be a lot more involved in that. Maybe uh, other, uh, maybe rather than just avoiding it, like, why am I avoiding it? Look at that. Why do you avoid stuff? And if you're avoiding something for more than a couple of days, like, you got to really look at this thing. Like, hey, why am I, first of all, look internally, like, why am I avoiding this? And number two, is this really important? is the thing I'm invo avoiding important, which is why I go to, why I had that discussion with myself. If I don't do the slides, then what happens, right? But if you have something that you're avoiding and you say, well, what happens if I don't do this and it's not detrimental or it's not something and it's something you can live with and maybe you don't need to do it. Maybe you can just put it, put it away for a little bit and do something, find something else that really matters. You should not have tasks in your calendar. Creating a keynote slide for a course is not a, that's not a task. That is a straight up needle mover. 
That's something that's got to be done. So identify what those things are. And little by little, you'll start to get closer to doing the type of work that you should be doing, the type of work that matters. And all this busy work, like these, you know, emails and text messages and all that stuff, while important and while done, it shouldn't be the, shouldn't be the focus of your day. It shouldn't be the priority of your day ever if you want to get ahead. All right, go out there and crush it.